Welcome back. Let's play some 10 minute games here on Shogi Wars. Central file rook today? Good luck. At least that's how I'm feeling. I even have Gota, so it makes some degree of sense for me to play this way. Note, if they do play like that, I do have to respond pretty quickly. Can't just let this go unopposed completely. Uh, actually, I've read that, or I've heard that the better way to deal with this... <laughs> ah, yeah, here we are. Everyone's favorite opening. Um, sure. We'll see how they're feeling about this. I might just be throwing a pawn here just for funsies, you know. I might also be offering to go into the... What's they call it? Yoko Fudori? What? Side pawn capture? But that's not what they were doing here. They didn't even take my side pawn. Or the rook didn't even capture sideways here. So... I guess I'm trying to transpose into something that kind of sort of looks like that. Um, I guess this sort of thing happens when I'm playing in a very free-spirited manner. I think they can take this. I think I can exchange bishops, drop my bishop here, they take my knight, I take this silver, except if they retreat, and if they do retreat, and we've exchanged bishops, and I've, um, I have some initiative here. Okay, they reconnected, we can continue play. I fully expect they need to protect the silver general, and they do. All right. So, yeah, where that leaves us is that I've sacrificed a pawn for some hope of an initiative, which may or may not come. Uh, it looks kind of interesting anyway. Here we go. My bishop is active. There's a check. Let's drop the rook back. Uh, they actually didn't need to do that. So, maybe I just played this stupidly exploitative thing um, and forgot that my knight was hanging. It's good to remember which things need to be where. Um, okay, my knight is a target. It's not the world's easiest target, but it is a target. Um... Just keep going. Hmm. Oh, this protects this pawn advance that they're planning now. Um, we're going to build a castle very quickly, because things are about to get nuts. This is only defended by the king. Hmm. I can't do anything. Maybe I should have moved it to the center, but I was trying to leave options open for where my bishop goes. Um, my opponent's trying to figure out where to drop their bishop, but there's no perfect square to drop it on. There might be some good squares, but nothing's perfect. My bishop covers my knight's head, so if they block, they try to hit my knight, I just take it. Uh, this is surprising. I could doubly take on here, giving my rook and bishop to get this fork. They would take my pawn, I'd take a knight. That might be a bit too much. Um, there is a different thing I could do. So rook takes is now the threat, followed by bishop takes knight. Mm -hmm. 
Opinions may differ on how good this idea is. But yeah, taking this knight, being so close to the king, could be of some value. Um, hmm. I'm really trying to talk myself into it. Hmm. It'd be nice if there were a cleaner way about things. But once I take this knight, I'm threatening a silver. The silver could retreat to safety. I could drop the knight. Yeah, this looks interesting. Let's do it. In chess, you would be horrified to give away this much material. In shogi, it just happens sometimes. The best way forward doesn't always involve directly hitting material and doesn't always involve directly hitting the king. Um, hmm. They might offer a rook for my horse. That wasn't really the deal I was aiming for. And since I have the horse, or the knight in hand, I'm planning on dropping the knight and taking this gold and luring the king out further and further. But for now, the silver could also become a target. I built a castle. They're still working on building one and putting the king inside it. So I'm playing very aggressively here. Also, I'm intending this pawn advance and then this knight advance, making use of the knight that's already on the board. Um, as opposed to using the knight that's from my hand. But yeah, they might drop a rook to defend this rook. They could drop a different piece to defend it, too. Or they could move it away, but it just seems to keep running over and over each time I hit it. I guess also a pawn drop is kind of reasonable. Hmm. But yeah, this pawn advance, trying to win a silver for a pawn, doesn't look so bad. I moved this toward the king, even though normally you prefer to move toward your own king. Uh, in this case, this this entire arrangement looks pretty loose. With that, let's have some water and check. Yeah, the overlay looks fine. <clears throat> I try to read, except there, are, there's a ton of variations, and me reading aloud something that's not going to happen doesn't add much value, does it? Maybe it does. So kicking the silver back toward the castle would actually be unwise, because then they'd have a silver defending their king, and then this gold could move back to join the silver. And, yeah, I could get some material back, but this is floating out in space. It's always an easy target. I don't want to give up such an easy target. So, yeah, dropping a knight is probably preferable to using this one. Um, hmm. Oh, do I have the same... No. Yes, yeah, so if I drop this knight, if this gold hits my horse, then I move the horse and I hit this, and I'll continue and you hit that. Um. Hmm. Well, at the very least, we got them thinking. A pawn drop here. If this gold moves back, I could take it and drop the gold here, but I don't have a mate. 
buttons, so that's not so bright. Um, yeah, there's only so many ways a pawn and a knight can be dropped. There's a lot, but there's only so many. Depending where the rook moves, potentially this horse could move and hit the silver again. But potentially a bishop could go defend this from a distance, or a rook could defend it from a distance somehow. Without being such an easy target of a rook. Hmm. With the watchtower bishop, there is bound to be a brilliant move. So the Watchtower Bishop's the one that witnesses the entire board. Um, yeah, I don't have one of those at the moment. Arguably, maybe I had one earlier before I sacrificed my Rook for a Pawn and a Knight. Hmm. I should count. So I have four generals. They have four generals. Uh, they also have a rook and a bishop both in hand. So I am down a rook, a full rook. Hmm. Perhaps something happened on... Uh, yeah, that was my first suggestion, was like, perhaps they drop a rook on either square next to both our pieces to try to force this exchange. But then more tactics start showing up. Um, yeah, he probably has to give back some more material than he's already given back. He's given a pawn and a knight. If he does offer a rook for the horse... Uh, He'll be doing better, because then he'll just he'll be up a entire bishop, even though there's not a perfect square to drop the bishop on. But he's probably start he has to give some material back, and I have a knight, so I could do a fork. But I don't know. Thanks for the game. Yeah, I don't think it's quite as simple as a rage quit. I think. Probably something, <laughs> the Wi-Fi Gambit is probably something more like that. All right. One down, two to go. Still have time for two before the reset. Yeah. Use the silver like a plover. Good luck. Okay, we're going to play this. I know uh, recent, oh, okay. How do I respond to this? Oh, my. Um... Well, I mean, one way I have responded... Oh, that's perfectly fine to do this. Um, Alright, I'm going to play it this way. Not forget to use the silver. Uh, still try to figure out where to put this. Opposing Rook is good fun. Uh... This sort of position. Well, we know they're going to castle this way, so I'm going to play this to try to discourage Anaguma Castle. That didn't do anything. All right. Um, let's put this over here, maybe. Openings are not my strong suit. Um, yeah, inquire if they're going to close the diagonal. They are. So, this they play the dreaded castle. Oh, crud. <laughs> um, hmm. You know, I have an idea. Here we go. Uh, okay. All 
Anaguma versus Anaguma. Only because they were not indicating how they're going to attack, so, like, why should I indicate how I'm going to attack? Where's the fun in that? Um, now, actually, I have a silver out and about. That silver is going to have some fun here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this was unexpected. Um, gosh. Uh. Okay, the bishop covers the square. Don't get carried away. Don't get carried away here. We'll bring the bishop out some other way. Not through this edge. But yeah, they've built a very defensive shape. I've built a slightly less defensive uh, castle. Ever so slightly less. <laughs> yeah, now we just shuffle the pieces back and forth. Now, who was first player in this game? It was me. So I, the impetus is still on me to try to do something this game. Otherwise, I was going to joke that, you know, we could just aim for a, re a repetition draw. Just dance back and forth. Admire the sunset. Live in peace forever. We could do that. But I play Senta this game, so I should try to make something of it. Blink, blink. Um, blink. Okay, sure, I guess. Blink. Um, I have no idea what you're doing. So next I bring the rook over, and then we push the pawn three times, and then it takes the rook, the knight, and the lance. And then after we've taken all the opposing pieces, then we checkmate this king in the corner. Seems like a plan. Yeah, that's my plan. Um, just go over here. Mm-hmm. Nanafun. This is disrupting the plan. All right, fine, we'll take it. They did get a pawn in hand. Um, hmm. All right. Yeah, we got a lot of fun proverbs in the in the proverb box. Um. All right, so that's an attack. Hmm. 
Wait. Do I want the silver here? Uh, I could move it up, but then it becomes a target. Um, wait, if I take the bishop and then drop it, is it more powerful? Or if I move this token and threaten to take the knight, and then do this, my dragon becomes super powerful. Tactics are somewhat challenging. Um, now if I chase this bishop around, it does not increase in strength. Um, so we chase the bishop. Okay. That doesn't make the bishop more powerful. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm just not seeing where they're hitting me next. It's going to hurt when I see it, but I don't see it right now. Bishop, gold, takes, takes, eh. I don't like that. It doesn't work. Um. Hmm. Okay, let's activate this rook. If they chase the bishop... Oh, okay. Maybe that was obvious. I don't know. Don't run from a fork, they say. Sampun. Hmm. We're running from the fork. Yeah. There are technicalities. Mm -hmm. Technicalities are important in a game that's all about war. Details do matter. Hmm.
Hmm. Hang on, there's a fork. Ippun Sanjubio. It's got complex. Ippun. Mm, we both missed an important detail here. Drop on the square where your opponent wants to drop. <laughs> Who'd have guessed the corner square would be that square? Um, not me. We both missed that, though. Um. I'm gonna run out of time. Mm. This is awful. Oh, why am I helping them? Sanjubio. Hmm. Nijubio. I, I don't. I have no time and no ideas. That's a bit rough. Thanks for the game. They got careless at the end, and what mattered at the very end was just the site on which we're playing. Most sites play with time controls that are a bit different. Good luck. I never win when I play Onaguma Castle. Just absolutely never. It's like opponents have seen it before or something and know what to do. What are the chances? Although I don't think they'd seen that particular one before, but like just in general opponents have some idea of how to play this game. So. What? Okay. <laughs> Maybe now they'll do a bishop exchange? <laughs> I play provocative stuff, and this is provocative. Um, maybe not. 
What do I have to offer to get them to play moves I can predict? I guess I have to offer heavy material loss or something. But, like here, Rook takes is not a great move. Because I have this knight move. And then if they do something about this, then I have a bishop drop. So... Okay, this kind of deals with the bishop drop idea. I'm tilting just a bit. <laughs> but we're having fun, I hope. Um, Alright, so... Their grand plan is to promote this rook. Wait, why do I care about this rook? I don't think I do. Yeah, it'd be great to get my rook active, but if I do that, they just drop a pawn here. Um, if I drop a pawn, they drop the pawn anyway. I thought I had plans. Alright, well, let's see where this ends up. Uh, I'll take this. Oh, now I have a gold general. That changes this dynamic. Uh, and that if they drop a pawn, I could drop here. They take, I take, they take another piece. Change is relative. Um, it's not a change that matters. So, the difference that matters here is that I have a gold general. That's what matters. Um... All right, I'm going to entomb my bishop. Oh, well, okay. I guess I kind of walked into that. Um, hmm. Nanafun. Keep the king and the rook together. Or don't do that. Um, bishop and rook are pretty similar in value. What's not great is they're promoting this rook. Uh, I was joking about entombing the bishop. Didn't actually mean to do it. Hmm. So if I move my rook, they take my lance. I take here. I just don't escape this material up. Fine, we'll cut off the rook. I do entomb my bishop, and I'm not at all thrilled about it. Um, I was hoping to aim at their king, but I forgot to defend my king. Mm-hmm.
Okay, what's our next proverb? Against the edge king, push the edge king. Well, my king is not on an edge. There's one about keeping um, your horse near your own camp. not mentioned in that proverb is that the horse strikes in multiple directions if you keep it in your camp. Don't know why that part isn't... like I didn't see that part in the proverb, but maybe it's there somewhere. Um. Hmm. Wait, what does this do? It threatens to threaten my bishop. Okay. Well, now we know. I had to look at this multiple times to try to figure out if this is opening some... Oh, fudge. There's a fork. I'm giving up my horse or my gold. This is bad. This is... More like the... Oh. Well, sh Okay, I confused them. There's two of us confused now. Uh, that fork was not hard to find, but they missed it. <laughs> the horsey moves in an L shape. Truer words have never been spoken. Although, I think we're talking about the knight that moves in the L-shape, and the horse moves like a horse. Or the dragon horse, rather. There's the dragon horse and the dragon king. But, we'll try to keep things simple. Somehow I have very thoroughly spooked my opponent. I don't know what I did. Maybe they're just trying to restrain all of my pieces. If so, they're not doing a bad job of it. Sampun. Like, I very much enjoy attacking using a rook because I know how the rook moves. All these other pieces, they're not so easy for me to remember. I should know, but like, it just, with them all promoting, sometimes it, with lots of pieces promoting and exchanging in sequence, it can be hard to keep track of every detail. Um...
Hmm. Why did I do that? It seems to be for some definition of working, whatever I did there maybe works. Oh boy. Um Okay, we've liberated my bishop. Sent it to the opponent. Oh, man. What a hot position. What am I doing? Nifun. Whatever. There's got to be a proverb that just says attack. <laughs> There's some proverb that like says without an attack the game is lost. Okay. So we're attacking. Here, you can have these pieces in the corner. That's fine. They're yours. Enjoy. I have a different target in mind. If I can just click the mouse and get it to the right squares, that'd be great. How do you do this? How do you complete this attack? One game is like a devil. Perfect. <laughs> oh, man. If that's not the story of today's game, I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah, how do you win this game? <laughs> oh, dear. Uh...
All right. That's three games, right? I lost count, but I think that's three games. Thank you. Hope we've enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.